Bitcoin has crashed and there is a multitude of emotions with this, of course. Some people are sad, some people are disappointed, others are scared. Some people simply just see those red numbers and don't want to look at it anymore, right? They get indifferent. The question is, what is actually the thing that we want long term? How do we actually want this rally to play out in the next months and years potentially? Do we actually really want Bitcoin to just shoot up? to really have this accelerated rally to make a ton of gains very short term. I don't think that's the best way how this rally can pan out. Because what we actually want is a slow, steady increase. Because when the price increases slowly and steadily, that means there's a lot of time for new entrants hitting the market. Because rising prices in general create attention. And if the prices rise comparatively slow, a lot of new people can enter and the rally can last longer. On the flip side, right, if a rally is very, very fast, if prices spike up very fast and we see all-time high after all-time high printed pretty much every day, what do we actually have? Where does the demand come from? It mainly comes from the existing investors that are already onboarded that simply just deploy more fiat. Or worse, it comes from leverage, right? It comes from the existing people maybe not even having more assets, but borrowing against those assets and deploying those borrowed funds to push up the prices more. And this is actually what I believe, uh, what we are seeing in the last few weeks. When you look at DeFi protocols, right? Decentralized finance protocols such as Aave. And you look at the borrowing and lending rates. What you will discover is that borrowing, for example, stable coins, USDT, the borrowing rates are sky high now. It's very, very expensive to borrow Tether in Web3. You've got to pay 25, 30% per annum. And this is not normal. What this means is a lot of people lever up their positions, right? They want to get more exposure to crypto. They borrow stablecoins to deploy this to push up the prices. But what this also means is that this is not a sustainable situation. What this means is that it opens up an arbitrage opportunity. People can borrow money in traditional finance for maybe 7, 8, 9% and then deploy this in Web3 on Aave and make that interest rate arbitrage. That's massive. And usually these kind of gaps don't open up to that degree. So when we actually see something like this, we see a temporary massive overleveraging of the entire system. So monitoring those borrowing and lending rates on those larger DeFi protocols makes a lot of sense. Of course, the smaller DeFi protocols, those interest rates can fluctuate a lot because if just a single whale buys in or sells, then of course the rates jump. But for those very large multi-million dollar protocols, Normally, we don't see these fluctuations. Normally, we don't see this in Aave. And so, on the one hand, of course, it sucks, right? It sucks that we see prices correcting. It sucks that we're seeing red, at least short term, in our portfolio, especially the very risky positions, the risky meme coins or whatever. They are down the most, right? There's inherent leverage to the altcoins. When Bitcoin goes up 10% and some of those meme coins might be doubling, and when it goes down 10%, then they get cut in half. So... There is inherent leverage, especially for those kind of positions, it sucks. But for the long-term positions, like Bitcoin, actually, I believe this is a blessing in disguise. It's good that we see those temporary liquidations. It's good that we see those dips of 10, 20, maybe even 30% on the way. It's good because it gives us more time to rally. It's good because then over time, for things like the Bitcoin ETF inflows, they can creep up the price again they can put in some recovery, they can still achieve those higher prices without all the leverage, and we've got enough time to let the media talk about it, to let traditional mass media uh, inform Joe Schmo about it. People have more time to learn about Bitcoin, right? We are now, most people here probably that watch, they've been in crypto for a longer time. They've been in crypto at least for a year, maybe two years. They know the fundamental tokenomics of Bitcoin. They know the inherent value of Bitcoin that's completely decentralized and removing all the risk that individual governments have. But most people don't know about this yet. And in order to get strong conviction, you need time to learn. And in order for that to then happen, you need the rally to be slow enough so people still get fair prices and still feel comfortable risking a large portion of their wealth in this. There are actually indicators, there are actually mathematical models that try to quantify this effect. There is, for example, the RSI, that is a very simple indicator. It simply measures 
how quickly are we going currently up or down. Right? It simply measures the pace of change relative to an average. And if you are currently shooting up a lot, then of course the RSI is high and we are overbought and vice versa. So if we creep up slower, then the RSI doesn't shoot up so high, so we don't get overbought that quickly. So we can achieve the same kind of high price, but simply just by getting to it slower, that price increase is more stable. So that's a very standard way to look at this. This is also pretty known in traditional finance. But there's another measure that's only available to the blockchain. You can only derive this when you've got blockchain data. And that's the market value to realized value Z-score. So you might have heard of the realized value. The realized value simply looks at what did Bitcoin on average trade for in all of its history. So we know the current price, right? That's a recent trade. Well, a lot of people made trades before that. And if the price is currently rising very steeply, then the average price of the market participants is obviously lower. So people are on average in profit and vice versa. If you are currently crashing a lot, then the market value is above the current price. And so most people are in losses. So you can look at the market value, but you can also look at the losses and the profit relative to the current volatility, as in how much is the price currently moving up and down. So that's the Z-score part of it, market value to realized value Z-score. So if you currently are very, very volatile, then you can allow for more profit. If you're currently not so volatile, then we can allow for less profit. Now, if you're currently super volatile and we're shooting up very quickly, then we hit those higher levels also very fast. And you don't want to be in those high levels because then we are obviously overbought. Vice versa, right? If you're currently rather trickling down, then you have a bit more time to dollar cost average in. Right? You, you don't necessarily have to buy the dip today. You can just buy over several months and then wait for Bitcoin to recover because long term Bitcoin will recover, right? We've got monetary expansion of 6.5% per annum. That's how fast US M2 is expanding per year on average. So we know that over time Bitcoin gets rarer relative to the fiat currencies. We know that Bitcoin over time gets lost. We know that Bitcoin over time gets scooped up by the ETFs. All of those kinds of effects in the end will increase the US dollar valuation of Bitcoin. So you can simply just buy into Bitcoin regularly and then sell on those way ups. But ideally you don't want to see those massive peaks too early. The slower they come, the higher the peak in the end is. And we might not see those peaks too often, right? We only see them maybe every three to four years, depending on what kind of theory you believe in. So if you don't see the peaks too often, then rather have those peaks be worth it. Right? Then rather let's go slowly and not use too much leverage and have enough time for the people to all jump in for, for all of this to properly materialize. So even though things might not look so nice now in the moment, if we simply just take a step back and we let it all play out, things will be fine. I strongly believe that. I'm at least positioned in that direction and I'm okay if we drop, especially if you're currently not fully deployed. Those drops are some kind of an opportunity, right? You can always buy where it's comparatively low. This is the nice thing about dollar cost averaging in general, right? If you're dropping, you have a nice story to tell yourself because you can buy lower. If you're going up, you also have a nice story because you made money. So you become more agnostic to the price movements if you're buying in regularly anyways and you want to sell at some point later in the future. So that makes the whole psychology game a bit easier. Dollar cost averaging always uh, is a way to tell you a nice story in the market. If it's the first time here, feel free to subscribe. I publish videos regularly. A like would be very much appreciated as well. It helps the channel grow. See you next time. Cheers.